Hey Battle Buddies, welcome back to my channel. And for those who are new here, my name is Miss Bohemian Goddess and I've been documenting my journey from Dallas, Texas all the way here to Accra, Ghana. And now I am the proud owner of Truth Check Solutions, your go-to resources for stress-free, scam-free relocation services. And today's topic is going to be relocating here to Ghana and getting stuck. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, and comment below. Let's have a chat. We're not trying to be broke here. about this. This is very serious. Um, I've been here five months and I've met four people. Well, let me say five because I met one when I first got here in March and I met a couple. So it's a total of five people. This is Coffee and he wants to sit in my lap. I don't know if he's going to be with us through the whole conversation, but for now, as you can see, he's sitting in my lap like a baby. So let's have this conversation because it's very, very, very important. My whole focus of my YouTube channel is to prepare people to moving here and making sure that they do it smart, um, efficiently, uh, think about all the pros and the cons, um, things that's going on here in Ghana. I know people will look at my channel and some people will comment and say, you know, negative remarks thinking that I'm talking bad about Ghana and those uh, of such, but that's not the case. My whole purpose is to inform people, knowledge people about things that's going on here so that they can make a sound decision. Because one thing about it is you don't want to come here and then realize all these things are going on and then you hate it. Or if you wish you knew, you wouldn't have came here. You know, I want you to be successful. That's the whole thing. Knowledge is supposed to be shared, not kept. And a lot of people on this beautiful YouTube channel will tell you so many different things and we run with it, right? A lot of you do not do your research. You don't, I, I, and you have to be honest with yourself to know that you don't. You just listen to somebody on this YouTube channel and you think that's what it is and it's golden, it's not the case. I, I cannot stress enough how important it is to do your research outside of what comes out of somebody's mouth. All my channel, I tell you to do your research. Don't listen to the words that come out my mouth. My path might not be your path. And sometimes my path can be your path, but you still have to do your research, okay? So I'm gonna be giving you guys quick short stories about experiences that I've had with people who are stuck here and they're broke. And that's not a good look. It's not, it's not a good look coming from America and then you come into another country and you're broke and you're stuck. So we're gonna start, okay, so I'm gonna put him down. Because if you're not going to sit up coffee, then you need to go and sit down. Excuse us. Sorry. <laughs> so, I met a couple when I first moved here. I was staying at the gallery. And in the gallery, you know, I met another young lady. And majority of the people that staying at the gallery, you know, were visitors. You know, so I met a lot of cool people there when I stayed there. So a young lady and I, she's from the United States as well. And I met her and we was at the pool. And this couple came uh, to the pool as well. And they heard our accent, you know, we sound American. So they, you know, came over and start blending conversation, asking little questions about where we're from to the point where that conversation turned into us finding out that they're stuck here in Ghana. And this is a young couple. I'm talking about between 24 to 27-ish. I cannot remember the exact age of them, but they were young. And they were telling us how they flew from United States to Nigeria. Then from Nigeria, they came to Ghana. 
And now they're here in Ghana. They stay in Oyarifa and they were telling us about how the lights, the powers are off all the time. They don't have water that pumps inside. So they have to go outside and fetch the water and they don't have the money to even eat sometimes. They work at locally with the guy, um, with the locals selling tomatoes. So they buy it and they try to sell it and stuff like that. And I was very shocked, but it didn't, you know, I didn't get taken back uh, per se because, you know, things happen. It's the same thing in the States. You know, you'll move to another state and things don't pan out the way you expect it. And then you end up being homeless, especially when you don't have family. So it didn't really like put a, a thought in my head of anything of that nature. But, you know, they were looking to get back to United States and they had no money. And for them to fly from Ghana straight to the United States, they have a plane ticket, they said, from Nigeria to go back to the United States, but they don't have the funds to get back to Nigeria so they can fly back to the United States because they have a round trip from Nigeria to the United States, but they took a one-way flight from Nigeria to Ghana. So I, I was, it was just like, wow, okay. So that's the first instance that I have met a couple young couple here that is stuck and they're broke and they're literally truly with the locals you know selling tomatoes just so they can make ends meet <clears throat> so I, I even during that conversation you know they were saying that they saw someone on youtube that told that what they were listening to basically that was saying they came here with x amount of money and so they saved up their money and they came with five thousand dollars and now they've been in Africa, I would say, because they was in Nigeria as well. So I just can't say Ghana, but they've been in Africa for two and a half years and now they're stuck. So it's very important that you do your research. You cannot come on this YouTube channel and watch somebody's life story as they're telling it to you. And you're thinking that that is what it is because it's not. Um, people come on, yeah, when I was in the States, you know, I was prone to YouTube, right? I mean, I was stuck like Lou. I was following a lot of people and I still follow a few people. So what you see is a perception of, oh, they're doing well and they made it with $5,000 or they made it with $3,000. That is not the case, okay, at all. So that was definitely devastating to hear, right? But as time go on, and my exploring of Ghana and getting to know Ghana and getting settled in Ghana, I met another person and it was a guy. It was at least about four months ago, you know? And basically he goes to these little um, events where a lot of expats will go to, diasporas I should say, will go to so that he can meet other diasporas to see what they're doing so that he can basically start, at least try to work for them or, you know, start, doing stuff and starting a business or something where he can jump in where his expertise can be useful in someone's business. Again, grown man, you know, stuck here. And his conversation to him and I, we had where he came here, same thing. He came here with $10,000 and he had found him a place to stay. Everything was doing well, you know, but, you know, things change. And he only did a one-way ticket here. I tell people on my YouTube channel, do not do a one-way ticket to nowhere. I don't care if you was in the States doing a one-way ticket to go to your mama house. You better do a round trip ticket because you don't know when you get there how things is going to be, right? So he did a one-way ticket. He's stuck here in Ghana, you know, and trying to figure out what he can do, you know, what, what job can he do? Just trying to basically piggyback on other diasporas who came here and trying to figure their way and see if he can merge and start something with them. And that's not a bad idea. I mean, I, technically that's kind of smart, you know, because a lot of diasporas come here to start a business, right? So if you um, are, is an accountant or you an electrician or you doing something that somebody would need that type of services, then it kind of, it's kind of smart, you know, where you can get some sort of money from your services. But again, coming here, and being stuck. <laughs> I just don't, I don't, I don't get it, you know, um, but it happens. 
it, it very much so happens. I met another couple. I went to a, a spa and I met another couple. They were at the spa. You would never even <laughs> think that they're going through anything because you're at the spa, you know? Uh, that spa is for people, you know, who want to relax and got a little, little change, you know, they can spare. Not their last money they spare that you're going to spend on a spa. That's not a priority, nor is it a need. But I met them. They have came from Tanzania and came here. <laughs> Same as the first couple, Nigerian came here. Uh, they was looking at some ladies' channel. It was an older lady channel on YouTube, they told me. And they decided to come because they were saying how cheap it is here in Ghana and coming from Tanzania. The, um, it wasn't, they said. So they came here and I'm asking them like, what, you know, what's going on? And they was like, oh, you know, we, we decided to buy a piece of land in Cape Coast. A uh, guy was selling it. So we bought our land, but then we came here and we, you know, we, we, we was trying to find a builder and we ended up getting scammed from the builder. And I was just shocked. Right. And so I'm like, well, what you guys going to do? You know? So they said they're on re their retirement. And so they said they're going to make it work. You know, them too only bought a one-way ticket. And I told him, listen, why you got a little pocket change, you know, try to save you some money and buy you guys a flight back just in case, because you never know. And they was like, okay, that's a good idea. So the husband's like, yeah, that's smart because people was telling us not to buy a round trip ticket because it's going to be a waste if you're planning on staying here. And I was telling him, no, please buy you a ticket back to your, back to the United States so that just in case something happens, you can hop on that plane and you can go. You know, so again, they are budgeting. And I was like, you guys at the spa, you know, you're a thing. And he was like, oh, my wife, you know, she's been stressed for the past year and a half that she's been here in Ghana. And she was just begging him to please let's do a spa so she can just have a wind down and just regroup. And I believe in that. So I, I didn't dispute that because I believe in that. So I understood. Right. But you meet these and this is an older couple. They got to be like at least in their 60s. You know, so these are things that you have to just prioritize the things that you're trying to do when you're moving out of the country. I swear, <laughs> I, you'll think I have a real baby. Uh, prioritize yourself when you're moving out of the country. But I'm going to tell you this next one is, is I, it was heartening that I helped this, this person because... It, as a woman, single, and you don't have anyone here to help you, <clears throat> it touched me with her. Um, I met her when I was at the market. Um, and as I'm speaking, you know, as soon as I open my mouth, you know I'm not gunning it, right? I might look it. I trick them all the time, baby. <laughs> this, this face and this ear cut tricks them. But when I open my mouth, they know that I'm not gunning it. And so... She was following me and I was, I didn't really pay too much attention to the follow because, um, it's so crowded at the market. So you won't even know that someone's truly following you. You'll think that they're just doing the same thing that you're doing shopping, you know, and just so happens that you stop at to get your egg, your eggplant, they stop at the eggplant, you know, you go and get your pepe, they're getting pepe, you know, you, you just don't know. Long story short, um, I end up stopping to get me, <clears throat> to get my, I like to get my uh, mangoes cut. I like my mangoes cut. So um, she started, you know, talking to me and she was like, hey, how are you? I told her, I'm fine, you know. And she was asking me where I'm from. I'm so sorry, I'm putting coffee down because he's not keeping still. So she asked me where I'm from, I told her. And so she started engaging a conversation with me. And surely enough, by the end of that conversation, I found out that she's stuck here. And it's so sad because, again, listening to these people on YouTube saying that, oh, I came here with $5,000, I came here with $1,000. And yes, that can be very interesting 
to know that someone made it here with $1,000 or $3,000 or $10,000 or wherever the case may be. It can be very intriguing and you think that you can do it if all you got in your bank account is $1,000 or you've only got $10,000 or you're about to sell everything in your house and you'll have five or $10,000. And she, she just wanted to get back home. She was from Louisiana and she just wanted to get back home. And I told her I would help her. I, I was like, where are you staying? And she was telling me that she stayed, if I can remember. See, I don't be, can't pronounce these names. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm still learning. But it wasn't far from where I live. Um, so I went ahead and I told her that I would get her a ticket back home. And she was so grateful. And I spoke to her mom, she called her mom and told her mom that, you know, she's gonna be coming back home. So, and this was over a course, I met her I met her at the market and I would say by the end of that week, I was able to arrange for her to get back home. I, as a woman, you know, it's, 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 it's not easy being here alone uh, with no family. You don't really can trust everybody that you meet. You have to be very careful. You know, even being in the diasporas, you have to be careful because again, not everybody is out f to be friends. They're trying to figure out what I can get from you, you know, and you might not know why or what their motive is when they're coming to talk to you. And I'm not saying that's everybody, but what I am saying is that you just have to be careful because you don't know. And even as a woman, you come here, you know, you can be taken advantage of. Um, so I, my heart goes out to her because um, I, I, I will share something in the end of, of my situation on why I'm very um, selective in certain things that I do and why I do my research and make sure that before I even go anywhere, I, I do my research. But yes, so I help this young lady. And if you're watching this, I hope you are doing wonderful back in the States. I am so, so, so proud of you. Um, I have spoken to you since you've landed, but I haven't heard from you. So I'm hoping everything is fine. But yes, I, I, I you got to. I, I can't stress enough on how important it is for you to do your research. Now, this last couple <laughs> I met, um, they bought a car here, so they are living in their car. So um, my heart goes to people who are homeless, okay? Um, and when I met this couple, you know, I was actually going into the Malcolm and they were coming out of their car. And um, so, and and they're more my age group. So I didn't take nothing to it, you know. <clears throat> I, again, as soon as I open my mouth, they know that I'm not got it. So they asked for uh, some help. I mean, they, they came up to me and straight up told me their story that, you know, um, they paid money to the landlord and the the landlord um, ended up taking the money but didn't give them the apartment. And they said that they didn't use an agent because, you know, the agent be charging all these fees and things like that. So, and, and I get it, right? I, I truly get it. And the crazy thing about it is, um, is it haven't happened to me, but I've seen it happen to other people um, here in Ghana, you know, so when they told me this story, it wasn't a surprise to me that this has happened. So I went ahead and, you know, whatever they asked me for, I helped them out. But they said that they're trying to find a place to stay. And, um, I was like, okay, no problem. You know, I, I wish them the best and I, I helped them out. But I, <laughs> I need, it's very important, guys. I mean, I don't have a big channel, but I'm hoping that I help people. That's that's really all my channel is for. My main focus is for me to be able to help people to make a sound decision before they uproot themselves and come to the continent. It's not cheap to live in Ghana, it's not. Certain things, you know, can be very inexpensive, right? But at the same time, it's not. I did my my budget uh, a few videos back. I did my budget, and that can be very inexpensive for me. But it's that's not the norm, you know. That's that's kind of expensive for someone who's a true Ghanaian that lives here, you know. So 
you cannot look based on what somebody else's budget is. You have to look at your own. Before, I want to say, um, oh, where we is? Eight, eight, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. So yeah, 15 years ago, I was homeless. Um, and I lost everything. I was a firefighter. I had two cars. I had a house. And I lost everything to poor money management. Okay? And that's, I'm just being honest. Poor money management. I don't have family in the United States. So uh, a good friend of mine, Deborah, I love you, um, told me to join the military. And me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an islander to the bone. We sassy. We got, I'm out slick. Okay, very, very slick. So I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna join the military. It's just not me. Nobody gonna tell me what to do. And it's divine. Again, you know, just like these people in the mall shopping, in the stores, going. That was me. I was in the mall, spent my last little piece of pocket change in the mall, and I saw a guy with military uniform on. And some told me to ask him um, some questions, and I stopped him, and I did. Turned out he was a recruiter. Okay, and. From that conversation, it was done. I joined the military, you know. So um, the military changed my life. Um, and the whole 10 years of my career, I was focused on financial stability because I knew that I never wanted to be in that situation again. I was given a second chance at life and for success. And I, I took it. I took it. Everything I did, I plotted on my life for 10 years. I plotted on my life. Um, certain things I would change. I'm not going to lie to you. If I can go back and change two of, two things, I would. But, hey, that's neither here or there. But the whole point I'm making is that that's something that will touch me if I meet somebody and, they, and they're homeless, you know, and um, I, I'm going to be more prone to help, you know, because I was there. You know, people would look at people on the streets in the States and you don't even know how they got there, right? I was living in my car, you know? So these things, is, is it touches to me home because it's real life for me. That was my past. And I've never been ashamed of my past. People can say, oh, you homeless, you this. I <laughs> look at me now. See what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't, I don't let things from my past define my future. I feel like, Again, um, if I can tell someone, you know, like if I did it, you can too. Um, especially with me, I had no family that I can depend on or run to when I was homeless. Oh, let me stay at your house or anything. I didn't have that. So right then and there, I made a, a conscious decision. So same thing. When I meet these people, you know, something in my spirit tells me to help and I help. Um, so... I'm coming to you guys, pleading for you guys, wanting to move to the continent. It don't have to be Ghana. I mean, anywhere, okay? Anywhere. You have to do your due diligence and research. You have to have your finances in order. You have to. If you don't have residual income coming in from somewhere, then you got to have a nice, hefty plan and savings so that you can build your house, buy your land, these people moving here smoothly, stress-free and scam-free. That's where my passion came from because I want to help people. You know, I, I, it's, it's, you, you might not want to pay, you know, but you can do the sacrifice and don't pay and be like some of these people, you know, where you, you're, being, you're being cheap on the back in the front end where now you're going to suffer in the back end. And you're losing thousands because you're trying to save a couple of dollars, right? So that was the whole reason why I started True Check Solutions. One, you guys know I've been scammed, okay? I don't have no one boots on ground here at that time when I was purchasing this townhome, okay? So my business is boots on ground. If you need someone to help you find land, find an apartment, Find a house, get you settled here where you can stay here, you know, with no problem. Get your resident permit. These things I can help you with. Get your Ghana card. These things my business can help you with. And 
If you choose to move here and thinking you can do it on your own, which you can, because I did, right? But I had help. I can't even lie. I had help. I had help at the end before I moved here. And I thank him for that. Like, I, I can't thank him enough to trust somebody to handle your business for you when you're not here to see it or to do it yourself. So if you come here and you're meeting people and they know that you don't know the ropes, they'll scam you. You come here and you don't want to pay for an agent to show you around, then you will suffer the consequences in the back end. These are things that you have to think about. You do. And that's the whole purpose of Truth Check Solutions, so that you can move here stress-free and smoothly. Paying a couple hundred dollars now will save you thousands later. That's how I see it. So being successful here, it takes time. But if you have someone that has boots on ground and that can help you maneuver your way here to live here comfortably with no problems, then I suggest you go that route. You don't even have to come to me. There's people on this platform that can also help you transition into Ghana with no worries. I just want you to be good. I just want you to have everything and all the resources that you need so that you can be here successfully with no issues. That's it. Do your due diligence. Make sure your finance is in order. If you're able to purchase um, before you come and start building, you know, have someone boots on ground that can go and get your land for you, get you started, get you a builder, you know, do these things. Again, you don't have to come to me. I offer all these services. I have a trusted builder. I have a trusted attorney that can help you with any legals that you have and can help you build your home here. I do site visits. If you want to, if you don't use me and you want to, uh, someone to go and check on a site for you, we do site visit to go and check on these homes that you're getting built or properties that you're thinking about purchasing to make sure that they are there and they're giving you what they said that you're buying. These are things that we do at True Check Solutions. If you're relocating here and you need a place to stay and you need um, to get your residence so you can stay here uh, for the year without having to try and get your visa every three months, then we do all of that. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need here in Ghana, okay? So I cannot tell you enough what's for you. No one can take it away, not even yourself. So guys, until next time, bye.